Hello, everybody. This is Marcos Karim from Cloudera. So pleasure to join the Big Data Toronto, as usual. So today we're going to be talking about how you're going to be multi-staging pipelines with different workloads running on the Cloudera data platform. So it'll be myself and based in Toronto. It's been Cloudera more than uh, one year and more than 15 years in the big data industry. And also I have my colleague, Phil. Please, Phil, introduce yourself. So my name is Phil, coming to you live from Montreal, because I can do that remotely because of COVID. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Cloudera. I've been with the company for about two years and a half, and prior to that, I was actually a Cloudera customer, so I'm coming from the customer side. And I'll you, let you, Marcos, jump in for the rest of the presentation. I'll jump for the demo Thank afterwards. Thank you, Phil. So I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about Cloudera, even though we call it the new Cloudera, like coming from the merging for, with, with Hortonworks, where today we have more than 3,000 employees, 2,000 customers, and in Canada, it's no different, right? So we have hundreds of customers in Canada, the top banks, top financials, retails, uh, utilities, and moving forward with insurance and so on, right? So it's been gladly working with the Canadian industry in the last 10 years it was a small team. Today's a pretty big team and, and proud team working with many customers in Canada. Uh, moving forward, you know, have been using our stack for years, right? So we really like using what we used to call Hadoop, right? To bring something totally new to the market, something that could not be done by other distributions, other technologies like analyzing, analyzing massive data, large scaling data, uh, distributing computing and so on. And of course, using open source and how big, like usually you used to run like one job to get the job done in five hours. Today is totally the opposite, right? Today we have hundreds of applications running in our, in our technology, hundreds of different personas using the technology. If you think about business analysts, if you, analysts, if you think about data scientists, auditors, everybody are getting to the platform right now and to try to get insights, predictive analytics, and so on. Uh, so think about the diverse technologies and ecosystem that were created by, by the whole Hortonworks that called their ecosystem. So moving forward, in the next, in the last 10 years, uh, of course, we are totally started with the on-prem where you have what you call your big monolithic cluster that address a lot of challenges, right? Solve a lot of problems regarding how to ingest data, consume data, and give data away to, to, to the final users, uh, and save a lot of money compared with other and previous data warehouse solutions we have in the market. So later on, a lot of challenges, techno technology challenges were addressed regarding, think about the public cloud, the coupling storage and compute, give you more agility, to do not wait for long migrations and upgrades at the same time. Uh, just think you could be easily use the public cloud to spin up a server, use Kubernetes and all that beauty. However, it's nice, but it does come with costs, right? So that's why the evolution that we call the generation tree, it's Cloudera, right? We are the first enterprise data cloud company where you're gonna have the same flexibility of using the, a multi-cloud, not just one cloud. You can pick your AWS, Azure, GCP later on. Also you can, more importantly, you're gonna keep the data on private on, for on-premise for many reasons. So we are deploying the hybrid cloud solution for you and keeping the same runtime and the same. So just think about, uh, overall, that you're going to be deploying multiple experience within one platform, right? So not just you're going to be only doing streaming, engineering, and machine learning. You're going to be doing everything, right, within one solution, one platform. And more importantly, how you're going to be allowing the data governance to be in place, right? Think about lineage. Think about all migrating workloads. Think about the metadata and so on. And of course, do not forget we are open, right? Open standards, open standards, open source, open APIs to integrate your first stack. So Cloudera Data Platform, we, as we see here at the bottom, the runtime is the same, where we merge it, the runtimes for, for, for previous Hortonworks and, Cl and Cloudera. You're gonna have like different experience running the platform. At the top, you're gonna see the multiple distributions we have today. 
Uh, at, and the center here is what, is what we call the Cloudera shared data experience, right? Where it's going to have full control, governance, schema migration, and so on, that Phil is going to be showing you on, on a demo. So on the, on the right, it's where we have everything that you'll be doing as part of the SDX, right? Replicating data, using data catalog for governance, for classification of the data, workload manager to analyze what are the best workloads to run the cloud, to mitigate your costs, and so on. And that's the full, what we call the full life cycle we control. So just from the left to the right, we don't have like point solutions only. So we are fully integrated running all your workloads. Plus you're gonna see at the bottom here, the, 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 the SDX doing its work and make sure no auditors, no governance, and you'll be causing any, any trouble deploying your, your, your project. So now, Demo time, and I'm gonna pass over to to Phil to to kick this off. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm gonna show you what the product looks like. So the first thing that you guys get access once you subscribe to our services or get to a trial is our Cloudera data platform, our CDP platform landing page. This is what the landing page looks like, right? This is our enterprise data cloud product. Um, it, as Marcos mentioned, we have multiple analytic experiences. These are on the top, right? So from left to right, we start with the data hub cluster. The data hub for us is a cluster as a service. It's meant for when people need to go a level down and really have more tweaks and levers to tweak uh, very specific parameters of the services. It's built on a platform where you pick a template, which is a blueprint to launch services. I'm going to cover that a little bit later. Data engineering is something that we just released on AWS, right? It's about to be released in Azure as well. It is Spark on Docker uh, using Apache Airflow for scheduling. Unfortunately, since it's brand new, uh, I won't be able to cover it, but keep that in mind, we have blog posts available on our website about that. I'm going to be covering a little bit more detail, the data warehouse one. Data warehouse for us is SQL-based analytics. Uh, so coming from legacy Cloudera uh, solutions, we have Apache Impala. And from Hortonworks customers, we've got Apache Hive with LLAP. So it is Ivy LLAP and Impala running on Docker. Operational database, uh, moving right, is HBase. For more in the nitty gritty details, when if you've got NoSQL database needs, this is something that we offer as well. And machine learning, which is going to be the core of the functionality I'm going to be uh, covering here, right? So. Let me uh, jump right in, right? So this demo is going to be running on AWS, right? We have uh, versions running on AWS. It's the same version running on Azure. And we also have a version that we recently released for private cloud. The private cloud version runs on Kubernetes as well. But instead of using the native service providers, Kubernetes uh, uh, services, such as Elastic Kubernetes Service or Microsoft Azure Kubernetes Service, we're using Red Hat OpenShift. So the first thing uh, that you need to do once you get access to our system is get to the management console, right? So the management console is your single pane of glass. It's your console to get access to the system. Uh, the first thing you need to do is create an environment. An environment for us is just a logical concept, right? This is where you would create your dev, test, prod, QA environment. Uh, as you can see, we've got a single a uh, single uh, console right now connecting to AWS as well as Azure. This is where our multi-cloud capability comes in, right? So everything that is part of the console is completely agnostic of whether you're running on AWS or Azure. I'm going to be using the AWS one today because that's the one I prepped for the, for the demo. So Marcos mentioned the SDX layer, right? The, share, the Cloudera shared data experience. Uh, it's, it is our one of the biggest differentiator uh, in the industry, right? So what is SDX? It is your data lake. And I'm not talking about storage here. I'm talking about you know, what comes around the storage, right? So for example, the data catalog, right? So all of the metadata. So the definition of your table, your schema, uh, columns, uh, comments on those columns, and so on. This is part of the SDX layer. We also have security authorization, right? Because authentication is taken care of by the console itself, but authorization is specific to each environment, right? So you've got an SDX, and we we leverage Apache Ranger for that. Ranger is a plugin based uh, plugin based security suite. It's a single pane of glass for everything that's in our platform when it comes to authorization. 
And we've got Atlas uh, for governance. Something that's key here between Ranger and Atlas is that they integrate together, right? So instead of creating role-based access control, where you would say X amount of users have write, read access to a table or a column, you can actually say, you know what? There is a cla data classification inside of Atlas that states that specific columns or table are private information, for example. And you create a rule in Ranger saying everything that has this classification, regardless of the type, it could be a Kafka topic, a table column, well, it's prohibited, or you've got access to it because you're part of HR or something like that. So once you've got your data lake running, right? So that means that you've got an Atlas Ranger and data catalog running, right? You can play, uh, you can start playing with the data. The first thing I'll do is jump into Atlas because that's our secret sauce, right? So the Atlas link here, I'm gonna hit it. And I know for a fact that I've got a machine learning uh, model that's currently deployed in our Cloudera machine learning uh, project. So uh, one thing to note, you don't have to manually fill that in, right? All of our products automatically feed Atlas with all of the governance information. So I'm going to go here, check for machine learning deployment, and then I'm going to search for my name because I know I'm the one that deployed it. It's a shared demo environment, tons of people working in there. And I've deployed one on September 17th, you know, using the, the name here, it's that one. So every single time you do something in our systems, in any of the experiences, it trickles back into the, the, the SDX, right? So even if it's something that's ephemeral and you kill it afterwards, it's going to leave a trace, you know, an audit trail, a core, including all of the lineage data that comes with it. So this one was using 1,000 milli cores. So that's one, one CPU cores, right? It's not using any GPUs. So I'm not using any uh, graphical cards for a neural network, for example, for deep learning. I'm the owner. Uh, Phil is the owner here, and the status is currently uh, deploying because I just restarted before the demo. So the key here is that where is this model coming from, right? From our point of view, a model is a Docker container, and that Docker container contains all of the dependencies needed to uh, score your model. In that case, I know it, it's a Python script, right? So it's using PySpark, for example. I'm going to show you what it looks like afterwards. But where is this data coming from? That's one of the questions that's really hard to answer is, once you've got a model, what was used to create that model? This is where the full lineage comes in, you know, from edge to AI governance. So I click the lineage tab here, right? Then I jump into what, what it looks like. On the far right is what I'm... It's currently highlighted in red. It's my model that's hosted. That's the REST service, right? That REST service was created at one point, right? So it was built. So there was a build process that was created. That build operation is something that I've done. My name is here. So Phil has built a machine learning model. And this machine learning model is currently being hosted. Now, you see that there are two sources here, you know, one top and one bottom. The bottom one is actually a machine learning project. So part of Cloudera Machine Learning, we have the concept of a project. This project, uh, we have got a project right now where you can share resources amongst team. You can create rules, uh, fine grain access, SSH tunnel, a bunch of stuff. So this one is called Telco Churn Demo. I'll jump into it a little bit afterwards. You'll see where it's coming from. And this Telco Churn Demo, well, it created this machine learning model, but it had a source. Turns out I've been using a SQL table, right? So part of our project, right? I'll zoom a little bit in. You'll see there's a B logo here, that's Apache Hive. So there's a table that's called Telco Churn. And turns out I'm not the one who created it. It's one of my colleagues that created it on an, in the month of July. And it's you know Jeff, Jeff Fletcher who created that Telco Churn table. And when he did that, it started somewhere. It started from an Amazon Web Services. So it's an S3 bucket containing this data. So even though Jeff created this Telco Churn table uh, back in July, right, from an S3 uh, bucket. I'm using it right now to host a model, so I've got full traceability here. And let me show you what created that full lineage information. So I'll go back to my uh, welcome page here, and I'll go into the machine learning uh, piece of our software. Again, same concept of workspace and environment, right? So I've got one on AWS and one in Azure. They hook back to the environment. Once I get in, here's my project, Telco Churn Demo, right? Telco Churn Demo uh, is based on something I've actually forked it on GitHub, right? So it's public. It's not something that's on private uh, GitHub, right? So we've got a, uh, we acquired a boutique uh, machine learning firm out of Brooklyn, New York, a couple of years ago that was called Fast Forward Labs. It's now called Cloudera Fast Forward Labs. And, you know, they, they produce uh, 
machine learning models and demos, as well as uh, prototypes uh, publicly, including white papers. So I'm using one of their project uh, for demo purposes today. So it comes with everything needed to build the demo itself, uh, including uh, the hosting of the, the, the model and a small application, right? So it comes with an overview, uh, you know, how to build it, how to ingest data, uh, filter it, dig into the data, a typical workflow where a data scientist and, and or a data engineer would work through to get something in production, right? So going back to my machine learning, I've got the model here, right? So the model itself, model explainer 17 something, I can see it's running, right? So I can actually test my REST API. I hit the test button, there's a curl coming here on top I could use as well. And it's telling me, you know what, somebody that's in a month to month contract with this telco, doesn't have any device protection, pays $70 a month, according to our model, as a probability of about 3% to switch to another provider, right? One thing to note here is that we have full ML ops capability as well, right? So you see there's a unique identifier that's generated at the bottom. Every single call uh, to this model is actually stored, right, in the matrix store. So you can keep track of the accuracy and probability of, you know, oh, I need to retrain that model because because it's drifting, for example, right? So it's a whole other demo that would take another 30 minutes, but I figured it would be worth mentioning that we do support, uh, you know, tracking those single invocation of our models. This model came from somewhere, right? I had a build process. So I can click the build tab here, and I've got the full, uh, you know, as standard out and standard uh, and the logs created during the creation of that model. So it's fetching the dependencies, building the Docker container and everything. That was something that was actually pushed to, uh, to Atlas as well. I did train it at one point. So I created a job. A job for us is a series of steps, right? Uh, that can be anything, any file in your project. So in that case, it's using a Python file, train model using Python 3. This is where you set your schedule. For example, you could say, you know what, I'm, I want to run that on a cron job, or I want to create multi -step, multiple steps, right? So there's a data engineer that created a Scala script, kick-ass Scala script I want to use. Then when it's done, I need to run my Python, Python script to clean it up and make it work. So this is where you would create a dependent one. And each of those steps in the job is actually run in complete isolation in a separate Docker containers with different dependencies and libraries. So you can actually have a really nice melting pot of you know, different teams collaborating into delivering a product to production. Something that we added recently is something called applications. Uh, in that case, it supports anything that's UI-based. Uh, this one's using uh, Flask. Uh, so I've got a small application here. Hold on, let me refresh. I've got a small application here. And the small application is a small web UI that exposes that model so I can play with it, right? So let me click on any, any of those. And it's the same, same matrix I've had before, right? So this one is month to month, 63% chance of, of churning. I switch it to two years and then it's like, oh, 30%. You know what, uh, how much they're paying, you know, monthly charges, let's put the $200 instead of 60 bucks, oops. Now their you know, churn probability goes down and so on. So it's, it's a nice way to, uh, to work uh, with models and expose them uh, while, while you're working with them in a nice visual way. That way you can expo expose sort of the inner working of your models to people that are less familiar with how, how, how stuff works. Now, all of this setup was automatically generated, right? I didn't have to do anything uh, to make that work. It was all deployed when I started. So where is this coming from, right? So you see that on top here, I've got a new session button. This is how I work, right? So I can open up an editor. In that case, it's the built-in workbench. We also do support uh, uh, Jupyter Hub as well as RStudio, right? Uh, I select my kernel, then the engine profile I need, and then I just hit the launch button, then it creates a Docker container for me to work in. Now, I've actually done that earlier today to make sure it was working fine. So if I go into my sessions, we've got the demo deploy here, you know, ran for four hours, uh, four hours ago for 17 minutes. And what's nice is that the session itself is kept, right? Every output is kept. So the first thing I did was a bunch of pip install. You know, I needed PySpark. Uh, I needed the Flask for my application I just shown you and so on. Everything is kept here. And it can be shared, right? So there's a shared button on top. You can share it with others. So it gives you a permalink. And with that permalink, you can actually hook to a session that's in progress, right? So if somebody does a print to the console of a, I don't know, a RDD in Spark, 
the people with the link open in their screen are going to see the update in live, uh, right? And I've got the full logs as well, the backend logs of, you know, I've attempted six times to launch a container. I needed to create a new pod and so on, right? So all of the backend logs are also available and are kept forever and ever, right, uh, in, that, in that section. Now, going back to that uh, actual project, right? So if I open it up, the uh, data ingest, you are going to see that I'm loading uh, this uh, data like churn demo that it's in CSV. I'm using a Spark table and so on. So the Spark SQL here uses a table called telco churn. So that's a SQL. That's a SQL interface. So because we are sharing this machine learning uh, experience with our data warehouse. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to copy the data over or anything to use it in a, a using traditional SQL-based tool. Right. So this is where our SQL uh, data warehouse uh, experience comes in. Right. So data warehouse, same exact navigation. I I select my environment, it highlights the different catalogs. In that case, I, I only got one. And then I've got an AWS, and I've got a uh, Hive, and a, a AWS Impala uh, demo that are available. I'm going to start that one, because it takes about 30 seconds to spool up, right? And I can jump right in well, once it started. These things are called virtual warehouses, right? Well, what's a virtual warehouse for us? It's a something that's re ready to really to, to receive queries, right? So once you hit the plus button on top, right? You enter your name of your warehouse. You pick the technology. Is it Hive or Impala you want to work with? You pick your catalog, the one from AWS, and then you pick a size. We've got T-shirt sizes, small, medium, large, and so on. And then you've got some you know, levers you can play with to control your cost, right? So this thing is actually going to launch you know, a, a service that is ready to get SQL queries. It can be SQL queries over GDBC, UDBC, built-in tools, part of our platforms, an external editor that you've got. As long as it speaks SQL over GDBC, you're golden, right? Once a query gets in, it's going to spool up a bunch of Docker containers inside of Kubernetes to get this query run, right? So this is how you control your concurrency. You say, you know what? I want to go up to 50 nodes, but I want a minimum of 20 nodes ready at all time because I don't want people waiting for that spool up that takes a couple of seconds, right? Then, you know, at the end of the day, after, I don't know, uh, 1,300 seconds, you know, let's kill everything because I don't want to continue paying. And the what's key here is not only are you saving when it's down on resources from Amazon, you're also saving on Cloudera cost because everything I've just shown you so far is actually built by hour, right? So it's consumption-based model. There's a bunch of other tweaks, right? How do you want to scale up? Do you want to have and make sure that at least five people can always connect at the same time, right? So once you launch one, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, right? And it's ready to scale up and scale down. Uh, one here, the Hive one is still starting. I should be able to open up my viz anytime now. Let me just refresh my page to make sure it's up to date. All right. Let me jump into the uh, Ranger policies uh, because uh, it's starting taking a few seconds more than I was expected. So going back here, right? Uh, I mentioned the data hubs. Uh, a data hub is a recipe or a blueprint to create a cluster. I've got one that's running right here. Um, this data hub, for those familiar with Cloudera Manager, they're going to recognize the UI, right? So it's a regular cluster. But the biggest difference here is that instead of having their own catalog governance and security, we've created something called a data context, right? So this data context points to the uh, SDX layer that's running in the environment. environment. So you've got Ranger, Atlas, Knox, and Hive for SSO, uh, SQL, uh, security, and governance that, are, that is pushed upward. Marcos actually is the one that created the flow in NiFi, right? So we've got a um, NiFi by tool that's based in our Cloudera data flow uh, portfolio. Um, so it's a, it, it's a simple flow, flow-based programming. Uh, this would require an old 30 minutes just for the tool itself, but I mentioned it would be nice to showcase it a little bit. You know, it listed local files, fetch them, unpack, unpack them because they were compressed converted the CSV to an Avro file and dumped that on S3, uh, all that using no programming uh, at all, right? So uh, drag and dropping boxes and so on. What's key here is that all of this working 
uh, uh, and messaging of the file is actually pushed to Atlas as well. So, I mean, this, if uh, we know that, you know, my colleague Jeff was created the S3 bucket, but if it was Marcos that created it, I would actually be able to click on the uh, machine learning model and go all the way back to the actual source of that first list file that's on top, right? Going back to data warehouse, my hive is running right now. I'm going to open up Hue. So Hue is our uh, standard uh, end user for end user endpoints. Um, it contains, uh, you know, autocomplete and so on. I can do a select star from uh, telco churn, right? So it's going to be there, telco churn. And then if I run the select star here, that's running on the Docker containers uh, that I've just pulled up uh, live, right? Uh, you can see that I've got a raw data here, right? But as you can see, the gender is completely null, right? So how come is this happening? Same thing, we support, you know, sharing queries. Marcos was kind enough to create a telco analysis. One in here, you click on that one. It's the query that Marcos sent me a little bit earlier. It uses graphs, right? Marcos was able to work with the gender, right? So his, his, uh, his data, when he picked the gender, he had something, but in my case, I don't, right? How does that work, right? So Ranger supports something that we call a cell level security, right? So we support row level filtering. So it pushes basically what are where clauses automatically. So for the typical, you know, quote is, does your shareholder knows your, your financial results before your CEO kind of deal, right? But you can actually push those predicates down and we can also push it on the, uh, the column as well, right? But not only access or deny, we actually can do uh, masking, data masking at the cell level. Now, the regular way of doing that would be, hey, you know what, going into a portal, selecting the column and saying, you know what, Phil is part of a group that's not supposed to have access to gender, so you know, mask, mask this column. But that's not, uh, not, that's not the way I did it that, uh, this time, right? So going back in Atlas here, right, I, I'll go into my table, which is my Hive table. I click on it here. It's going to open up my telco churn table. And this is where the magic happens, right? This is really, really powerful. Instead of doing role-based security, we do attribute-based uh, security. So if I go into my schema and click on the gender column, you'll see that the gender column has a classification, right? So we added something called private info, right? A couple of clicks, I created something uh, yesterday that, uh, you know, a private info is something that I'm going to do magic with. So I said, gender has private info. And if I go into my classification and click on private info, it's the only thing in my catalog that has this. It's a specific column, part of a specific table. Now, if I go back to my, um, to my management here, going back to my environment, I'll open up Ranger and I'll show you what it looks like. So I'll go into the audit here because it's the easiest way. I, I've just run it, right? So right now I'm going to filter for the user is equal to my name. And you'll see that I've done a bunch of stuff in NiFi because I've just opened up NiFi and show it to you. But also you'll see that, you know, there's a Hive column with a private info and I was allowed to read it, right? So it was allowed. But I, there was also, if I click on the, um, might be a little bit down on the second page, there's a uh, policy that was created, uh, here it is, a policy that was created to mask it. And I've got a direct link to the policy. It says, you know what? Phil was using a dupe SQL, right? He did a, a select, that, that's, the, uh, that's the query that Marcos uh, sent me, right? And you know what? It was allowed, but it was a masking that was applied because there was a private info tag. And I can actually click on that policy here. And it's telling me, you know what? For Phil, when he's using Hive, nullify that column, return it as null. Now let me show you what it looks like in, in you know, in actual sense. I've got a tag-based policy in here. This is very powerful, right? Instead of having somebody going around and ma making sure that the rules are, you know, all set together for all your social security number, you can actually tag them uh, part of your uh, ingestion process. So that's the 329 version I've got here. And all I did was pick the tag, private info, and said, you know, for Phil, make sure to nullify. And we've got multiple options here. We can show the last four, show the first four, ash it, and so on, right? One thing that's not super obvious here, but is very powerful, is that these tags support propagation, right? So if somebody would be 
uh, to you know create a job in Spark that reads that table and writes it the second time around, while well, it would still carry on over that private info tag. And the rule is not set to my table or my column. It is set to the tag itself, so it applies automatically. So the th that gives you a good overview you know, of what our Cloudera data platform is. Everything I've just shown you was running on AWS. It is also available right now on Azure. Uh, we are going to release GCP as well soon. What's also available right now is the private cloud version of all of this. So it's exact same thing, same binaries and everything, but instead of leveraging AKS or AKS in public cloud, we leverage a Red Hat OpenShift deployment that runs on-prem, which could be useful from heavy regulated industries, such as financial and you know, uh, special ops or DND, that kind of deal. And uh, uh, we will be uh, on the virtual boot uh, today and tomorrow to answer any questions. And we'll be happy to jump in to give you more details. So that concludes my demo for the uh, Cloudera data platform on AWS.